now time for oral questions, and I recognize the Leader of the Official Opposition. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Speaker. Before I start, I, I think it's important to note that this morning, early on, we lost a great Ontarian and Canadian, Harry Leslie Smith, at the age of 85. Uh, 95. He was a passionate fighter for equity, justice, and universal uh, Medicare. He, uh, he was a veteran, and his uh, son, John, and family know that um, New Democrats will always stand with Harry. My question, Speaker, is um, my, my question to the Acting Premier. This morning in Ajax, workers at uh, uh, Martin, uh, Martin Ray, an auto parts supplier, learned that their jobs will soon be gone. The last ripple from GM's devastating news on the latest rather ripple from G GM's devastating news on Monday. Yesterday, the Premier travelled uh, to a uh, ribbon cutting in London, and today he plans to be in Grimsby. Will the Premier find some time in his itinerary, itinerary to meet face to face with GM workers in Oshawa who are looking for a government that will fight for their jobs? Thanks very much, uh, Speaker, and I can tell you that the Premier and my office have been working extremely hard to reach out to all of the auto parts sector in Ontario to ensure that we're getting a lay of the land to understand exactly what the closure of the Oshawa facility is going to mean to the Auto Parts Manufacturers Association and companies like Martin Rea and Linamar and Magna. I was on the phone yesterday with the leadership at all of those companies, reaching out to them. Most of them have said that there would be little to no impact as a result of the the, uh, closure at uh, Oshawa's uh, GM uh, facilities, uh, but I can tell you this is of uh, deep concern. There were 77 jobs that were uh, announced. We're going to be uh, lost in Ajax today. They uh, make suspension modules and engine cradles uh, for the Cadillac version uh, that was uh, being produced in Oshawa, as well as the Impala, which was coming off the lines in Oshawa. But again, most of those companies have said that the impact on the production chain, the supply chain, uh, will be minimal to no impact as General Motors is going to continue to build vehicles, uh, cars and trucks, Response. mostly trucks as they're moving to that angle. But I can tell you that the Premier and my ministry are there to support those who need us at this very important time of need. Supplementary. Families in Oshawa are still reeling from the news about uh, GM's plans. Layoffs will hit the women and men who work at GM hardest, but the impact for Oshawa's economy and Ontario's entire auto sector is potentially devastating, and we are already seeing it. While elected officials across North America are saying they're ready to fight, this decision by GM. The Premier said the ship has sailed. Why is the Premier missing in action, Speaker? Minister. I can tell you that the Premier has been very much in the middle of the action, Mr. Speaker. He's been talking to all five companies that manufacture automobiles yeah. in Ontario. That includes General Motors continuously, uh, FCA, uh, which operates in Windsor and in Brampton, Toyota, which of course we know is operating here, Honda as well, and, and Ford Motor Company, which all have a presence here. And We have the largest supply chain in North America right here in Ontario. We're very proud of that, but Mr. Speaker, we're doing every Everything that we can as the Ontario government to ensure that we're ripping through the red tape that has led to struggles for these companies. We're dealing with the high cost of electricity. We're dealing with the cap-and-trade. We've already dealt with the cap-and-trade, Mr. Speaker. And one thing our federal counterparts could do is join us. They could make a decision today if they decided that they were going to scrap their plans for a nationwide carbon tax. That would send a strong signal to business in Ontario and across the country. Thank you. The clock. Restart the clock. Final supplementary. The strongest signal this government has sent is that the green economy of the future is not going to be taking place right. here in Ontario. That's the signal That's this right. government has sent. At a time when families in Oshawa are looking for leadership, at a time when our auto sector needs a champion and a vision for the future, the Premier's message is, it's over, Government it's done, the ship has sailed. Why has the Premier gone into hiding when he should be fighting for these jobs? Minister. 
Mr. Speaker, I find it so ironic that the leader of the NDP stands up here and saying that she's going to fight, but we haven't heard any kind of a plan coming from her, Mr. Speaker. Meanwhile, we're implementing our plan for the automotive and manufacturing sector on this side of the House, Mr. Speaker. It hasn't been a surprise to anybody what we're doing when we say we're making Ontario open for business. We're not just saying that. We're, we're doing, doing that. We're reducing red tape. We're getting rid of the Opposition costly cap-and-trade system, which one of the auto parts manufacturers told me yesterday was a silly Member tax and completely unnecessary order. and a huge cost on the backs of business. <laughs> Meanwhile, the NDP, the NDP want to make it more expensive to drive cars in Ontario, they want to make it more expensive to buy cars in Ontario, and they want to make it more expensive to build cars in Ontario, Mr. Speaker. That's what the NDP is standing for. We're standing with manufacturers in Ontario. Order. House will come to order. Order. Start the clock. Next question, Leader of the Official Opposition. Well, Speaker, my next question is also to the Acting Premier, and I can't tell you how disappointed I am by the behaviour that this government is showing in the face of these massive job losses in Oshawa. Right. You know, as everyone knows, General Motors says that their global restructuring is driven by their plans to get into the car markets of the future. Right. Of the future, Speaker. Here in Ontario, GM indicated on the lobbyist registry that they planned to talk to Ontario about electric vehicles mm -hmm. and the incentives that the Premier was so dis determined to scrap. Can the Acting Premier tell us whether any meetings took place, and if so, what issues GM raised at those meetings? Acting Premier. Mr. Speaker, I can tell you that we've had plenty of meetings with General Motors, particularly over the last number of weeks, uh, talking about uh, the future of General Motors and the auto industry in Ontario. And we do that all the time at my Ministry Opposition of Economic Governor. Development, Job Creation and Trade, because what we want to ensure is that we are creating the environment where those jobs will come to Ontario, yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker. Under the previous 15 years, we've seen jobs leaving. Ontario at an alarming rate, and the NDP have been the enablers to all of the job-killing legislation that's been brought forward by the previous Liberal government. Take, for instance, Don Walker. He's the CEO of North America's largest auto parts maker who said that the previous Liberal government's policies were harming our competitiveness and harming the automotive sector. He pointed to Bill 40, 148, which the NDP wanted to take even further than what the Liberals proposed, Mr. Speaker, and said it's not very difficult to figure out that businesses might Spons. move as a result of Bill 148. We've wound that back, Mr. Speaker. We've passed Bill 47, and we're going to make Ontario open for business again. Yeah. Supplementary. Well, Speaker, as General Motors and other automakers position themselves for the future of the auto industry, this government is driving in the opposite direction. Right. So it seems as though the minister has um, you know, told this House that they were having meetings with GM. Kind of interesting that GM is hightailing it out of Ontario as a result. So has GM ever raised in those conversations with this government anything regarding this government's plan to scrap all incentives for electric vehicles? Minister. Speaker, one thing that's uh, clearly evident with this line of questioning again this morning is that the Leader of the Official Opposition has no understanding of how business works and what has actually happened. But what has actually happened here? 
This is not an Ontario problem alone. This was a global restructuring that occurred with Opposition General Motors. It didn't happen overnight. It wasn't a knee-jerk reaction to anything that was said or done. This is a global restructuring that has seen plants close in the United States of America and around the world, as well as the Oshawa facility. This is a company Order. that has made a business decision, Mr. Speaker. This company knows that they have a partner here in the Ontario govern a government, a partner that understands that the cost of them doing business here has gone through the roof, that there are competitive issues Position here in board. Ontario. We've started to address those problems, Mr. Speaker. Response. We will continue here, here. to address those problems, Mr. Speaker. We've passed Bill 57. We are going to pass other pieces of legislation that will make Final supplementary. Speaker, there's something I sure as hell know how to do, and that's fight for good jobs. One, we all know that the government's plan is not working, Bond, Speaker. That's order. what we all know. As our auto sector reels from this disastrous decision, they're looking for a government that can bring auto sector stakeholders together and work with industry, suppliers, and workers to protect and transition the future of this industry. Instead, they have a government that not only doesn't have a climate plan, but rips up clean energy contracts while they fight electric car makers in court. Does the acting premier think that that will protect jobs and generate investment, Speaker? Yeah. Response. Response. Well, Mr. Speaker, while our government is continuing to work hard to ensure we have a thriving automotive sector in here, I'd like to congratulate the member of the official opposition. She got what she meant to accomplish today, and that was to get her short video clip on the news. That's what Grandstand. she just got because Grandstand. she doesn't have a plan, Mr. Speaker. She continues to grandstand on this issue while we are doing the work on the ground, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, I, 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 the minister was imputing motive. I'm going to ask him to withdraw. Computing. Yeah, I'll, I'll withdraw, Mr. Speaker. Yep. But, but while we are working hard to ensure we have the environment for good jobs to be created here in Ontario, the members opposite are doing everything they can to make it more expensive for people who drive vehicles in this province, buy vehicles in this province, and those who build vehicles in this province. Mr. Speaker, we have to get out of the way and I'll ensure that we are making Ontario open for business. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're intent on doing. We'll continue to do everything yeah, yeah. we can to ensure GM. Yeah. Start the clock. Next question, the Leader of the Opposition. My next uh, question is also to the uh, Acting Premier, but I do have two words, Dean French. Yeah. Uh, look, look, Speaker, uh, families, in, side, families, come to order. In Oshawa, families in Oshawa are afraid for their future, Speaker. That's what's happening right now. Government side, families come to order. Are very, very afraid for their future. They're looking for a government. I apologize to the Leader of the Opposition. The government side will come to order. I'll give you more time. Leader of the Opposition. Families in Oshawa are afraid for, uh, for their future speaker. They're looking for a government to step up to the plate and fight for their jobs. They're looking for a government that's ready to roll up their sleeves and develop an auto strategy that will bring GM production to Oshawa and ensure the future of the auto industry in our province. At a time when we need leadership, why has the Premier gone AWOL? Acting Premier. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased uh, to take uh, this question today. The idea that the Premier is missing in action 
is ridiculous. I've never seen a premier that has reacted as vociferously as this premier has reacted in this case. Obviously, this is a very, very trying time for the people in Oshawa, but the premier has been on the phone non-stop and meeting face-to-face -face with people on the ground in Oshawa to try and resolve this situation. We were there Monday night after the news broke from General Motors. He's been on the phone with the other five, uh, other four automakers, all five automakers here in Ontario. We've been on the phone with all of the auto parts suppliers in Ontario, ensuring that we're taking those next steps all of them, Mr. Speaker, ensuring that we are taking the steps that are necessary for their survival here in Ontario, and not just their survival, Response. Mr. Speaker, but the growth of their companies, yeah, yeah. the growth of new, good-paying jobs in Ontario. I don't expect the other leader to stop the clock. Stop the clock. Stop the clock. The member for Hamilton Mountain will come to order. Start the clock. Supplementary. Do the families devastated by Monday's news need a premier who's ready to fight for their jobs? The premier decided, after a single phone call, that the ship has sailed, and instead of fighting for jobs in Oshawa, he apparently has other priorities. Minister of Government and Consumer Services, come why to the Premier is not there for the auto workers in Oshawa. Minister. Speaker, I can tell you that the Premier and our team here have worked extremely hard to ensure that we're there for the people on the ground. As I mentioned yesterday and on Monday, our government is there to ensure that the services for those affected in Oshawa will be there when they need them. But more importantly, we're continuing to work with General Motors, their leadership in Canada, their leadership globally. We're working with the other four automakers in Ontario. We're working with automakers who aren't yet located in Ontario and creating an environment here where they can come and create good jobs in Ontario. All day yesterday, we were on the phone with the auto parts supply chain, Mr. Speaker, talking to them about the impact of Oshawa and what we can do to ensure that they continue to operate here in Ontario. And most of them, Mr. Speaker, have said so far little or no Response. impact to their business. We want to ensure that they thrive, that they are successful, and that we make Ontario open for business, yeah. Mr. Speaker. Up the clock. Start the clock. Next question, the member for Etobicoke Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Mr. Speaker, for far too long, housing has been unaffordable in the province, especially in the Greater Toronto and Hamilton area. Vacancy rates are the lowest they have been for 17 years. We have heard on our side about the barriers to new housing supply. It takes too long for housing projects to get approved. Housing costs are too high. There's, there isn't enough innovation, and there are too many restrictions on what can be built. These are some of the biggest issues that are stopping new supply. Can the minister please explain how he is working to create solutions for the housing crisis? Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Thanks, Speaker, and I want to thank uh, the member for Etobicoke Centre for that excellent question. Mr. Speaker, we've said time and time again, both the Premier and I, that we have far too much red tape inhibiting the housing sector. That's why I was so pleased to announce our government's housing supply action plan. This will allow us to get ideas from stakeholders, from municipalities, and from the people of Ontario who have strong ideas on how we can build more housing in this province. Our action plan, Speaker, is not just in our ministry. All MPPs, all municipalities, stakeholders, and anyone interested in housing can hold their own consultations as well. I look forward to sharing more details of our consultations and how people can get involved in the supplemental. Thank you, Speaker. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank the minister for his answer. It is refreshing to see a government that is, that is not only concerned about this issue, but is also willing to consult with the people of Ontario to find real solutions to a serious problem. This has been a significant dilemma in my riding of Etobicoke Centre, and I am looking forward to engaging with my constituents so that we can help put forward more ideas. 
Mr. Speaker, as we all are, are all aware, there are many types of housing in Ontario. Some people rent apartments, some own homes, some rent out secondary units, and there is also social and community housing. Can the minister speak more about what kind of housing this action plan is looking to address? Great job. Minister. Thank you, uh, Speaker. And again, I want to commend uh, the member for Etobicoke Centre for staying involved and being so enthusiastic about our consultation process. Mr. Speaker, Ontario's housing problem is not limited to one particular kind of housing. That's why our plan will be addressing all kinds of housing. Our plan is geared towards rentals, community and social housing, and also homes to buy. We want to increase the housing supply in Ontario and look forward to hearing a variety of ideas on how that can happen. Our government will look on how we can cut red tape, how we can keep costs down, and how we can speed up the process to building more supply. And again, Mr. Speaker, these consultations can be hosted by anyone, and they're online. Anyone interested can go to Ontario.ca forward slash housing supply to get a consultation package and have a consultation on this very, very Next question, the member for Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. And my question is to the Acting Premier. Speaker, Sunday night, we got the news that GM Canada won't be putting any more product into Oshawa beyond December 19, 2019. If GM leaves after 100 years, our community will be devastated. I have also talked to folks from GM Canada, and it doesn't sound good. In fact, it sounds like we are in for a really rough, uncertain road ahead. And I won't try to give anyone false hope, but, Speaker, worse than giving false hope would be giving up on hope. We still have thousands of good jobs, the kind this government talks about wanting to bring to Ontario. Well, we still have them, and they deserve to be fought for. What I heard from the workers is that they will do whatever it takes to keep these jobs in Oshawa. What we heard from the Premier is that the government will not, because the ship has left the dock. So much has happened in the last only three days. Imagine what could happen between now and December 2019. Will the Premier fight alongside these workers and my community over the coming year? Acting Premier. Thanks, Speaker. What we do every day in fight this government is fight for jobs in Ontario. Fight to create the environment for new investment in Ontario and ensure that we're creating an environment where we can sustain the jobs that we have in Ontario. Under the provincial Liberals' watch, under the Win McGuinty era, we lost 320,000 manufacturing jobs in Ontario. Many of the policies that were brought in by the provincial Liberals, Mr. Speaker, were enabled for Orleans, by an NDP supportive and helping Hill hand, Hill Mr. Gordon. Speaker, Member while Brand, members Brand of the progressive. Gordon. Conservative opposition fought for the job pieces of legislation time and time again, and that's why this new PC government, led by Premier Ford, is bringing forward legislation that will create an environment Response. for new investment, allow us to sustain the jobs that we have in Ontario, and make Ontario open for business. I hope that the members of the NDP will help. Stop the clock. Order. The House will come to order. Start the clock. Supplementary. Again to the Acting Premier. Speaker, we have had terrible news and have had to and have to figure out a way forward for our community, and we can't do it without all parties coming to the table. Speaker, on Monday night, when the Premier came quietly into our city, he was only joined by about six of his PC MPPs and a few community leaders. Now, there is nothing wrong about who was included, but I think who was not welcome or invited speaks volumes about this government. No workers were at that table. After devastating news, the Premier and the Prime Minister should reach out to communities. And Speaker, I want to talk with the Premier about plans for our future. I want him to hear from us. I want the Premier to hear from our workers. You cannot say that you want everyone at the table and then not have any chairs for workers and families. Will the Premier meet with us? Minister. 
Uh, speaker, I can tell you that the Premier has spent the last three days uh, talking to families that are affected uh, by the closure, the impending closure or the uh, allocation of uh, vehicles at, at General Motors. And, Mr. Speaker, I can tell you that he cares very deeply about the stress that those families are facing at this time and the impact that losing their jobs is going to have, not just on those people, but other spin off businesses in the region. And that's why we're focusing on bringing in a plan for that region will allow future growth in the Durham region, but at the same time, continuing to work with the company, the employees, the leadership on the ground, uh, both uh, political and business leadership, to ensure that we're creating an environment where businesses can come in there and grow and work with General Motors, Mr. Speaker. The NDP seem to want to fight, fight, fight. What we want to do is work Work, work, have fruitful discussions that are going to lead to future investment from General Motors and other companies yeah. in the Durham region. That includes Oshawa. Stop the clock. Order. Start the clock. Next question, the member for Brantford Brant. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. Yesterday, our Premier and our Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs announced a $34.5 million investment into the new Maple Leaf Foods Modern and Innovative Chicken Processing Plant in London over the next five years. This $660 million investment is historic. It is the single largest investment in Ontario's agriculture sector, and our government is proud to have been proactive in this. This investment will make our chicken processing industry more competitive with its state-of-the-art manufacturing and production technologies and bring economic growth to southwestern Ontario. Can the minister please tell us how this investment will impact not only the chicken industry, and the, but also the agricultural industry overall in Ontario? Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and thanks to the member from Brantford Brant for the question. I'm, I'm pleased to join our Premier yesterday in London to announce this unprecedented investment. And my voice is a little bit uh, hazy. It was such an exciting day. I would like to commend Maple Leaf Foods for its leadership in developing this outstanding facility, as well as the federal government for all pa and all other partners for working together to bring this investment into southwestern Ontario. Maple Leaf Foods' new state-of-the-art facility in London will boost production for Ontario's chicken farmers and meet growing consumer demand for premium poultry products made in Canada, contributing to the value-added process in Ontario. It will feature the latest advanced technology and improved productivity, animal welfare and environmental sustainability of the poultry production all of which are priorities for our government. Our government Response. is committed to supporting Ontarians' growing farm and food sector, and we believe this investment will help Ontario's food process processing sector and send the message, Ontario is up. Thank you. <laughs> Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and to the minister for his answer and for his leadership in bringing growth and prosperity parity to our agricultural sector in Ontario. Ontario's agriculture sector is responsible for hundreds of thousands of jobs across the province and covers everything from field to farm to fork. Many of us have farms in our ridings, and I know that my constituents, who will have the opportunity to get good jobs because of our government's investment in Maple Leaf, are interested to know what else our government is doing to expand the agri-food sector in Ontario. Can the minister inform the House what steps our government is taking to grow agri-food business in Ontario? Minister. Mr. Speaker, to the Minister of Economic Development and Trade. Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. Well, thank you to the minister. Culture. I'm happy to assist him this morning. He's a little hoarse after talking about chickens all day yesterday. But uh, the member, the member is right, Speaker. The Premier and the ministers of Agriculture, Transportation, and Infrastructure were all present in London yesterday to highlight our government's investment in maple leaf. But we're doing so much more than that, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that businesses thrive here in Ontario in the agri-food sector. I know that last week the Minister of Agriculture, when he was able to speak, was able to announce the first of our government's many red tape reduction measures measures to help both the dairy and the beef farmers in Ontario. Our commitment as a government for the people is to reduce red tape by 25 per cent, Mr. Speaker, by 2022. That, Mr. Speaker, is going to help create jobs 
in the agri-food sector. It's going to help create jobs on Fine. farms and factories and in supermarkets. We're going to make it easier for them to get from the field to the fort, Mr. Speaker, and make sure the good things grow in Ontario. Stop the clock. Start the clock. Next question, the member for Nickel Belt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Francophone Affairs Minister. During my visit to North Bay, Francophones and Anglophones were very clear. They want their MP, the Minister of Finance, looks at the proof first, change uh, uh, the Office of the French Languages will not uh, uh, save money, and uh, the investment of $4.2 million for the uh, French University will bring uh, much more profit. They want their uh, MP, their minister, to support our motion. My question is simple. Is the minister uh, agreeable with the people from North Bay? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I would tell the North Bay people from the Minister of Finance's region that we support Franco-Ontarians, and every day we work to make Ontario a prosperous province because we want to be in a situation where we could pay for that university, which is really important. We said, and I repeat it several times, uh, that we did not abolish the project of that university. It's something that's repeated in the media. We did not abolish it. We continue working on this plan. And what is very important is to prepare the plan, but when we will be able to create that university, we will have the funding to support that plan. The member from Muskegawak, James Bay. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My uh, question is also for the uh, Minister of Francophone Affairs. Uh, yesterday, I met uh, several Francophone organizations. All what I heard about the decisions of your government does not foster the needs of uh, and the rights of Francophones in Ontario. Today, the uh, official leader will, our official leader, will ask uh, the government to restore the, these French institutions, which are essential for the French services in the province. Madam Speaker, Mr. Speaker, you and your government, you have the opportunity to do the right thing for Francophones in Ontario. Furthermore, I'm asking you, will you support our motion? Mr. Speaker, the Franco-Ontarian world is really a very important part of our history, but as well for our future. Our government supports all the necessary efforts to make sure there's access to French services. My ministry works on this file all the time. Mr. Speaker, the me measures taken by a government shows our willingness, and I convey that willingness to Franco-Ontarians every day. We work with and for the Franco-Ontarians. The decisions we made with respect to the uh, French language office, Mr. Speaker, will just strengthen and protect uh, linguistic rights in Ontario. And we're doing the right measures uh, to make sure of the uh, independence uh, of linguistic rights. Thank you. Next question, the member for Guelph. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the acting premier. Over the weekend, media reported that manufacturer BYD has put its proposed electric bus manufacturing facility in Ontario on hold. We are all well, well aware of the devastating news in Oshawa resulting from GM's restructuring to invest in electric and autonomous vehicles. As a matter of fact, automakers are pledging they will be investing $255 billion in EV R&D between now and 2023. Mr. Speaker, the world is changing, and Ontario needs a plan 
to the acting premier will you commit today to develop an auto strategy for Ontario to become a leader in the electric vehicle revolution so we don't lose jobs to jurisdictions Question. embracing EVs. The acting premier. Well, thanks very much, and uh, a good question from the member from Guelph this morning, and I appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to respond. I can tell you that what we're doing in Ontario is creating an environment for all businesses to be successful. Yeah. That includes yeah. those in the green sector. That includes those in the technology sector. One thing that all businesses come to Ontario or to any jurisdiction for is a low-tax environment, uh, you know, low energy costs. Uh, certainly, if you're investing in research and development, there has to be the talent here, and we have that in spades, Order, Mr. Speaker, and that's evident from the uh, recent Amazon uh, uh, process that just took place. Uh, Amazon and uh, Global Toronto, which worked so hard on that, uh, Toronto Global, uh, said that the one thing that we have at our advantage right now is talent, 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 Mr. Speaker, and that's what research and development Response. and these companies look for, is a talented workforce. We have that here, Mr. Speaker. We're working on all of those other things, like the high cost of electricity, getting rid of the carbon tax, and all those other things that will bring business to Ontario. Yeah. Thank you. Supplementary. With all due respect, Minister, we are going to have to work hard to be a global leader in the EV revolution. China, India, France, and the UK have all pledged to phase out combustion engines by 2040. Jurisdictions around the world are embracing the EV revolution. As a matter of fact, automakers predict that 54% of new vehicles will be electric by 2040. More than 90% of cars on the road in the US, Canada, and Europe will be EVs by 2040. We can't fall behind. So I'm asking the acting premier once again, will you stand up today and pledge to all stakeholders, business, labor, um, government, and um, EV advocates to bring us all together at the table and fight and develop a strategy for Ontario to be a global leader in the EV revolution? Acting premier. Uh, speaker, I can tell you that uh, we're willing to work with all companies. We're working to work with all partners, and we have been working with all partners over the last five months that we've been the government of Ontario to ensure that we see that kind of investment here in Ontario. I can tell you that we're getting rid of red tape right now that is going to allow for investment in the kind of technologies and the kind of AI that we're seeing in other parts of the world. Those, legis those pieces of legislation, those tired old uh, regulations have to be removed, and we're removing those pieces of regulation, Mr. Speaker, to allow that investment to occur. So whether it's BYD or any other automotive uh, manufacturer, Mr. Speaker, whether it's a combustion engine or it's an electric vehicle, we're willing to partner with anybody so that we can create good jobs in Ontario. The silver line in the whole General Motors story, Response. Mr. Speaker, is that they're continuing to invest in their research and development yeah, uh, yeah. facilities in Markham. We're working alongside the company to ensure that investment continues. Open for business. Next question, the member for Tobacco Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Minister of Transportation. I understand the minister spoke at the Economic Club of Canada earlier this week to talk about our government's transit plan. Our government was elected to grow our economy, to attract new investments, to create jobs, and to remove unnecessary burdens that were put in place by the previous government. By removing the regulatory burdens, the economy experiences significant growth, and Ontarians are able to keep more money in their pockets. Our government understands that improving public transit is vital to stimulating economic development. This will ensure Ontario is best positioned to attract new business and keep our best and brightest right here in Ontario. Can the minister share our government's transit plan? Uh, sorry, can the Question. minister share our government's transit-oriented development plan? The Minister of Transportation. Speaker, and uh, I truly want to thank the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore, who's been a really strong advocate for transit opportunities in her riding. Thank you very much. I also like to take this opportunity to thank the Economic Club of Canada for inviting me to speak uh, earlier this week. 
Uh, one of our commitments is to partner with the private sector and seize on opportunities such as transit-oriented development, starting with stations. Just last month, our government for the people announced that a new modern GO Transit station will be built in Mimico. And, and again, from the previous uh, Minister of Transportation, he did acknowledge that the member from Tobago Lakeshore was a strong advocate for getting Mimico going. Speaker, this project will optimize use of government-owned land and increase ridership by delivering customers a beautiful new station while building new development on the existing transit line. The new Mimico Ghost development will feature a brand new accessible station Response. building, pedestrian tunnels, elevators, refurbished platforms, new entrances to the station, and, and additional parking. I look forward to sharing more about the new Mimico Ghost station in my supplemental, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary. Thank you, Minister. The people of Ontario and the people of Etobicoke Lakeshore, thank you for that answer. I'm pleased to hear our government for the people is already moving full steam ahead with our transit-oriented development and Mimico, and we appreciate the extra parking spaces. Partnering with the private sector will get this work done at a lower cost to taxpayers, and by leveraging third-party investment, it reduces the funding required from the province, and it often allows infrastructure to be built in a more timely fashion. Mr. Speaker, the government has a plan. It's a plan that will allow us to make decisions faster and improve transit experience for all Ontarians. Tens of thousands of people depend on transit system to get to and from work and back home to their families. This is why it is important for our government to give Ontarians the ability to travel across the region in a fast and efficient manner. Can the minister elaborate more Question. on the transit-oriented development at the Mimico GO station in my riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore? <laughs> Minister. Thanks again for that uh, question. For the new Mimico GO station, the developer will pay all construction costs for the main station building, new parking, and a greenway at Mimico GO. In exchange, they'll have the right to develop above the station. It's a new kind of partnership, and it's the right kind of partnership. I believe there's a strong appetite for more partnerships such as this, and I'm excited to explore the new opportunities these partnerships will bring through a market-driven approach. Building above or around station also solves the first mile, last mile problem of getting people to and from their homes to the transit station. This is only but one approach. We're open to ideas from other forms of partnerships that create value for riders, communities, and interested parties. Moving forward, Mr. Speaker, we will look at all our major transit projects through this lens. As ridership goes up, revenues go up. But most importantly, Mr. Speaker, the people of Ontario better served. Exactly. Next question, the member for Toronto, Dan Ford. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question to the Minister of the Environment. In a recent speech, the Minister of the Environment, Conservation and Parks mentioned that the government might use Australia's climate change policies as a model for Ontario's. This would be unfortunate because Australia's emissions have been going up, not down. Exactly. Not only that, instead of a polluter pay system, Australia forces taxpayers to pay polluters yeah. with what is known as a reverse auction system. Ideas, Can the minister please confirm that he is not considering this ineffective and unfair system? Mr. The Environment, Conservation and Parks. Mr. Speaker, through you to the member, and thank you for the question. Um, we are looking at all of the options, and, uh, and tomorrow we look forward to bringing forward our environment plan for the province of Ontario. That, that, that plan will highlight a number of initiatives, uh, a number of approaches, um, but will also highlight the important contributions that Ontarians have already made. As I've said in this legislature, Mr. Speaker, between 2005 and now, Ontario has reduced its emissions by 22%. 2005 to now 22 percent, while the rest of Canada has increased emissions by 3 percent. And Mr. Speaker, tomorrow we're going to talk about on how Ontario continues to do its part and how Ontario also prepares communities and families to deal with climate change. But we will do so in a way that looks at all the best options, and that does not include, Mr. Speaker, a carbon tax or cap and trade. Yeah. <laughs> Supplementary. Well, Speaker, that sure didn't sound like a no to me. Uh, the minister has recently killed off a source of revenue that paid for climate change initiatives. That revenue has not been replaced. In fact, according to the latest budget bill, cancelling cap and trade cost us $1.5 billion this year alone in lost revenue. And now, under the Conservatives, there won't be any new money coming in for climate action. So how does the minister intend to pay for programs to reduce greenhouse gas emissions? 
Minister. Mr. Speaker, and the member from Toronto Danforth and I have had this, uh, this argument you well in this legislature before. When the NDP and he see taxpayers paying less, they see government having a problem. We see taxpayers' money in their pockets as a good thing, Mr. Here, here, it's a good thing. Your hand out of my pocket, here. $1.9 billion of money going back into the pockets of consumers. $260 a year for families. Mr. Speaker, we have promised and we will deliver a plan that balances the environment and balances the economy. But Mr. Speaker, we will not punish families and we will not apologize for some of the biggest tax cuts in Ontario history that help Opposition Ontario families. Here, here. Member for Waterloo, come to order. Member for Essex, come to order. Member for Hamilton East, Stony Creek, come to order. Start the clock. Next question, the member for Markham, Stouffville. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, my question is to the uh, Minister of Agriculture, Food and uh, Rural Affairs. Uh, Mr. Speaker, last week I understand the minister visited an elementary school in his riding of Oxford to celebrate the Fresh from the Farm fundraising program. Now, this program brings fresh Ontario grown foods to communities while supporting local schools. I understand that this year alone the program has generated an average of over $2,000 through sales of almost 770 kilograms of fresh produce per school. As you know, Minister, farmers in my riding are very excited to see their efforts go to an excellent cause, and students in my riding are equally excited to learn about some of the delicious food grown close to home. I wonder if the minister can expand on this and please tell us how this program helps farmers teach students in our Question. local communities the, about the importance of locally grown food. Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and, and to the member from Markville, Stouffville, Mark Hamp, Markham, friend Stouffville, for the fantastic interest in the fantastic program. Last week, I visited East Oxford Public School, where I spoke to the students about the importance of local food and knowing where their food comes from. I want to commend everyone involved in the project, from the Dietitians of Canada, the Ontario Fruit and Vegetable Growers Association, to local farmers and schools for developing an innovative way to promote Ontario produce and support our schools. The program sources 100% of its produce from Ontario local farmers, generously contribute their harvest at a reduced cost to meet the orders of food for the program. Students, in return, sell the local food, fruits and vegetables to the community, supporting the farmers, supporting Ontario's rural community and their own school initiatives. I'm very pleased to work with our Minister of Education on this initiative and commend her on her ministry's effort to teach students about agriculture and the importance of local food in the classroom. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the Minister for, for that. I know he's been working very hard to engage numerous stakeholders and partners uh, about this local initiative. Now, now, Mr. Speaker, not only does the Fresh from the Farm initiative teach students where their food comes from, it provides an insight into the agricultural industry in Ontario. Some of these students will be introduced for the first time to how local farmers impact their local community. Many students experience confusion when it comes to determining the pot a potential career path, and I am extremely pleased to see students are being introduced to an industry full of opportunities at such a young age. I wonder if the minister could please tell us how students would benefit uh, by learning about opportunities in agriculture. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Minister. To the Minister of Education. Minister of Education. Thank you very much. And first of all, thank you so much to the member from Markham Stouffville. I appreciate the question very much. For all you do, you're an amazing champion out there, and all throughout rural Ontario, we appreciate every effort you put forward. Because the agri-food industry in this province is thriving, and it's stronger than ever. Some would argue it's the number one sector in this province, Speaker. Yeah, yeah. And do you know, for every graduate coming out of the diploma and degree program associated with University of Guelph, there's four jobs waiting for wow. every graduate. And just a couple wow. of weeks ago, I learned that actually some of these graduates. 
are getting job offers as early as December, before they even graduate. This is great news, and the fact of the matter is the value chain associated with Ontario's agri-food system is ripe and fraught with opportunity. Right. Fra ripe, Response. yes, ripe, right, ripe, right. ripe with opportunity. And you know what? Over and above that, the F Fresh from the Farm initiative is a win-win-win. It's a great fundraising model for the schools. It stimulates local economy, and most of all, promotes Thank you very much. Next question, the member for Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Education. Speaker, every year the government consults education partners, including school boards, on their needs in order to inform the annual grants for student needs, which is really how most of our education system is, in fact, funded. But at just five pages long, this year's education funding guide is a chilling read. It is essentially a consultation on what to cut. Teachers, education workers, school administrators, and parents are already struggling to make up funding that has been lost during the government's so-called pause. Now they are being asked to help choose which cuts are next. Instead of asking how to make education better, fix our schools, and help our kids thrive, why is this government building a blueprint for deep cuts to our publicly funded education system? Wow. Minister of education. Thank you very much. First of all, again, I welcome the opportunity to remind everybody in this House and the folks watching on TV, the first thing we're addressing and cutting immediately is the nonsense and the fear-mongering coming from the members of the audience. Yeah. That is our number one priority. The other reality check is that this province has a $15 billion debt. And we deficit. all deficit, deficit. pardon me, and the debt is that much bigger, three hundred and forty-eight billion dollars. For Toronto, With Saint that Paul's said, come to order. we all have to do our part. And you know what? In working, what's wrong with inviting our stakeholders to have a thoughtful conversation about what's working and what's not? That's the most important part here. We want to take a look at first for London North Centre come to order. in terms of where we need Response. to be going and what our priorities are. And Mr. Speaker, let me be very clear. Our number one priority is that classroom and a wonderful learning Thank you. Thank you, supplementary. Well, Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Education wants to accuse us of fear-mongering. People are very afraid, and let me explain to you why. The government's education funding guide calls for an across-the-board cut of Member for Northumberland, Peter what does that equal? Gondor. It's a whopping $1 billion from Ontario's education system, Whoa. Minister. That's, and I just want to give you a sense of what that looks like. 4% of a budget, of a school board budget. That's like cutting the entire transportation budget out of the Ottawa Carleton District School Board. Government That's like slashing half of the Toronto District School Board budget for special education assistance. And in the Rainbow District School Board, that's enough to cut all the computer technicians, library technicians, library teachers, and guidance. Mr. Speaker, for King Vaughan, no Vaughan. one, no one voted for massive cuts to their local schools. No one asked for this government to gut our Question. publicly funded education system. Will the minister tell us how far this government intends to go in its quest for cuts? Minister. No oh, speaker. oh, Speaker. Oh, Speaker. Oh, oh, oh. The drama that's coming from oh, the, the member of Davenport is staggering. Because I can tell you that we have a Premier and an entire caucus that is standing shoulder to shoulder with our frontline teachers and our administrators and with our students. We are embarking on. Mr. Hamilton East, Stony Creek, take down the sign. Minister, complete your response. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. We are embarking on an amazing opportunity to turn the spotlight on the for best for learning board, environment ever. And do you know what? We want to hear from everyone. We would like to, again, use this opportunity Center, to again, encourage to people to participate in our consultation. We have had tremendous response. The response. data and the input is amazing. And you know what? If you haven't yet had an opportunity to do so, for please Waterloo, participate in the consultation for the parents.ca. Next 
next question, the member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> My question is for the Minister of Education. Minister, Financial Literacy Month is almost over, but that doesn't mean students or the NDP should stop learning about the importance of building and maintaining healthy financial habits. I am pleased to see that this government for the people is engaged in educating our students on this topic. And Mr. Speaker, ensuring that current and future generations of students are financially literate and are aware of common financial mistakes will benefit Ontario. Prioritizing financial literacy means more young people will make better financial decisions, which will benefit these individuals in the short and long term. Through you, Mr. Speaker. Minister, what can you tell us about what the government is doing to ensure Ontario's youth understand question. basic financial Good literacy? Question. Good question. Minister of Education. Thank you, Speaker. And thank you to the member from Carleton. She's doing a great job representing her riding. She's amazing. And she's offered a very in the the islands, come to question today. Earlier this week, Speaker, I would like to share with everyone in the House that the Minister of Finance and I met with the Junior Economic Club of Canada, and what an amazing evening we had with them. It was a valuable opportunity to hear firsthand from young people. You know, we, we couldn't help but note the effectiveness and the thoughtfulness of these kids. It, we shouldn't even call them kids because they could be sitting around any boardroom table today sharing their eloquence They're and their impressive. commitment to education. They were that impressive. I, you know, the Young fact of the matter Bible. is, people want to learn about okay. financial literacy because you know what we heard loud and clear, Speaker? We heard from this organization For that Paul's come financial to literacy is connected Response. to overall wellness. Here, here. We need to make sure that financial literacy is embedded in Number every Davenport, piece of curriculum that we here, have here. available to you. Supplementary. Through you, Mr. Speaker, to the Minister, thank you for that excellent answer that emphasizes the importance of our youth in moving forward uh, in this province. I know that parents in my riding of Carleton are pleased to know that our government for the people cares about ensuring a strong foundation in areas such as consumer awareness, personal finance, taxes, budgeting, and money management. Mr. Speaker, I know that our Minister of Education welcomes feedback from Ontarians regarding financial literacy. And through you, Mr. Speaker, Minister, where can my constituents go to have their voices heard on this critical subject? Minister. Thank, thank you so much. And again, thank you to the member from Carleton. You know, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't look up into the public galleries and see that it's full of students today. And you know, I look at them and I say, we're going to to stop wasteful spending and, and bring down the last administration's massive bills so our students have the confidence in the future they deserve. I feel so Excellent. proud every time I get to stand Order. up in this House to speak about what our government is doing to make every, make every effort to make sure every, everyone's voice is heard when it comes to the education system. You know what? The Number last administration to was going to plop financial literacy into half a semester Response. in terms of careers. They were just going to pop it into careers curriculum. Result. That is not what students deserve today. We need a fulsome curriculum that here, here. brings financial literacy. Next question, the member for York Southwestern. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the minister of training colleges and universities. This month, I met with Aidan, Michael, and Karen from the Ontario Undergraduate Student Alliance. In our meeting, we discussed how to better prepare young people for the workforce. These student leaders highlighted the importance of applied learning opportunities to help students gain real-world skills and ease transition into the workforce. Opportunities like co-ops, internships, undergraduate research projects, and community-based learning. I have tabled a motion that will create 27,000 new paid work opportunities for a student. And I, and I ask, will the minister support my motion to invest in 27,000 additional applied learning opportunities for students? 
Minister of Training, Colleges and Universities. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the member opposite for the question. Our government was elected with a strong mandate to create good jobs in Ontario, and as the Minister of Training, Colleges and Universities, my focus will be on making sure that the people of Ontario are prepared for those jobs. We want everyone in Ontario to have an opportunity to succeed and prosper, and post-secondary education is critical to that and the future of Ontario. Speaker, as we grow the economy, we need Ontarians who are skilled in sectors across the economy. And as Minister, I will support programs and efforts that help students get the skills that they need to find the employment of today and the future and help fill the skills gap. Here, Thank, here. You, Speaker. Thank you, Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Back to the Minister. More and more students graduating university are struggling to find meaningful work in their field of study. Additionally, employers are looking to hire young people for entry-level positions with relevant job experience. To better prepare students for the workforce, government needs to play a part in the solution. Applied learning opportunities bridge the gap between post-secondary studies and real work experience. Mr. Speaker, I ask again, Will the minister assure students of Ontario that this government will support my motion to provide them the skills to succeed as they transition into the workforce? Minister. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, Post-secondary education is absolutely critical to the future of Ontario and our economy. And we want to have an education system with high quality and which helps individuals prepare for the jobs of today and tomorrow. Yep. And we know from employers that Ontario has a skills gap, yep. and we need to take steps to deliver high-quality education to Ontarians so that job seekers can find employment and businesses can grow the economy. And that is why, Mr. Speaker, our government will support education and employment programs that benefit students and job seekers that are efficient and cost effective. Thank you, Speaker. Next question, the member for Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond. Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My uh, question is to one of my favourite ministers, the Minister for Seniors and Accessibility. Yeah. Speaker, I understand that this week the Rick Hansen Foundation hosted a forum on accessibility here in the City of Toronto. <coughs> Improving accessibility for Ontarians with disabilities is an important initiative that this government is committed to. Mr. Speaker, can the minister inform the House about the purpose of the forum and what this government is doing to improve accessibility for Ontarians with disability? Yeah, Mr. Seniors, accessibility. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Through you, I'd like to thank the honourable member who is a strong advocate for accessibility for raising this excellent question. Everyone in Ontario deserves to fully participate in everyday life. <laughs> Yesterday, I was honoured to deliver a welcoming speech to the Rick Hansen Foundation's 2018 Accessibility Leadership Forum. In attendance were national leaders from the disability community who are working to tear down barriers to accessibility across Canada. Mm. By working with the partners like the Rick Hansen and the leaders that attended this Accessibility Forum, Ontario will continue to lead the way in Canada. Supplementary. Uh, Mr. Speaker, that's why he's one of my favorite ministers. Yeah. Everybody loves Raymond Indy. Thank you, Minister, for that response. I'm pleased to learn the success of this forum and to, to hear that the Minister is act actively working with stakeholders on accessibility issues in our province. Our Minister, 
is willing to work with both stakeholders and every member of this House to facilitate the progress of accessibility in Ontario. Mr. Speaker, can the minister tell us what the government is doing to improve accessibility for Ontarians with disabilities? Minister. Thank you again, honourable uh, member. Mr. Speaker, this government was very pleased to recently, recently put the Employment and Information Communications Standards Development Committees back to work. Here, here. And we are excited to receive the AODA's third legislative review that is currently being prepared by the Honorable David Only. Mr. Speaker, stakeholders have been loud and clear that the Bill 47 will make Ontario open for business again. Through simplifying the. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes question period for today. I, I understand the member for Ottawa South has a point of order. Order, Mr. Speaker. I would like the unanimous consent from the House to allow members of the House to participate for 10 minutes in the debate this afternoon in order to debate on the resolution, the opposition resolution number five. From the Assembly to allow independent members to speak for 10 minutes during the debate. An opposition motion number five. They're seeking the unanimous consent of the House to allow an in independent member to speak for 10 minutes during the debate on opposition motion number five. Agreed? No. I heard some no's. Pursuant to Standing Order 38A, the member for Guelph has given notice of his dissatisfaction with the answer to his question given by the Acting Premier concerning the development of an electric auto strategy. This matter will be debated today at 6 p.m. We have a deferred vote on the amendment to Government Notice of Motion No. 20 relating to allocation of time on Bill 57, an act to enact, amend and repeal various statutes. Call in the members. This will be a five-minute bell.
time for the members to please take your seats. It's time for the members to please take their seats. On November the 27th, 2018, Ms. Thompson moved an amendment to the Government Notice of Motion No. 20 relating to the allocation of time on Bill 57. All those in favour of Ms. Thompson's motion will please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Smith Bay of Quinty. Mr. Smith Bay of Quinty. Mr. Bethlen Fall. Mr. Bethlen Fall. Mr. Yurick. Mr. Yurick. Ms. Mulroney. Ms. Mulroney. Ms. McLeod. Ms. McLeod. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Pettipiece. Mr. Pettipiece. Mrs. Marteau. Mrs. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Fullerton. Ms. Fullerton. Ms. Fullerton. Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Cho Mr. Rickford. Mr. Rickford. Mr. Rickford. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Letcher. Mr. Letcher. Mr. Coe. Mr. Coe. Mr. Downey. Mr. Downey. Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook. Mr. Kalanda. Mr. Kalanda. Ms. Serma. Ms. Serma. Mr. Parson. Mr. Parson. Ms. Skelly. Ms. Skelly. Mrs. Martin. <laughs> Mrs. Martin. <laughs> Ms. Triantafilopoulos. Ms. Triantafilopoulos. Mr. Sakaria. Mr. Sakaria. Ms. Park. Ms. Park. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Kusin. Ms. Kusindova. Ms. Kusindova. Mr. Romano. Mr. Romano. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Mrs. Cara Holly. Mrs. Cara Holly. Mrs. Fee. Mrs. Fee. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Smith Peterborough Cortha. Mr. Smith Peterborough Cortha. Mr. Kanj. Ms. Kanj. Ms. Kanj. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Pacini. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Tangri. Mrs. Tangri. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Sandu. Mr. Sandu. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Baumer. Mr. Baumer. Ms. McKenna. Ms. McKenna. Ms. Dunlop. Ms. Dunlop. Mr. Canapath. Mr. Canapath. Mr. Babikia. Mr. Babikia. Mr. Babber. Mr. Babber. Mr. Anon. Mr. Anon. Mr. Pang. Mr. Pang. Mr. Tanner. Mr. Tanagas. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Cazetta. Mr. Cazetta. Mr. Sabawi. Mr. Sabawi. All those opposed to Ms. Thompson's motion will please rise one at a time and be counted by the Mr. Bisson. Mr. Bisson. Madam Jell. Madam Jell. Mr. Tabbs. Mr. Tabbs. Ms. Smith. Ms. Singh Brampton Center. Ms. Singh Brampton Center. Mr. Vantoff. Mr. Vantoff. Mr. Nadishak. Mr. Nadishak. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Begum. Ms. Begum. Ms. Shaw. Ms. Shaw. Mr. Mamakwa. Mr. Mamakwa. Ms. Carpoche. Ms. Carpoche. Ms. Shumanta. Ms. Shumanta. Mr. L Ms. Lindo. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Styles. Ms. Styles. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. West. Mr. West. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Mrs. Gretzky. Mrs. Gretzky. Ms. French. Ms. French. Mr. Miller. Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Mr. Stony Creek. Mr. Singh Brampton East. Mr. Singh Brampton East. Ms. Lindo. Ms. <coughs> Ms. Andrew. Ms. Andrew. Ms. Andrew. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Birch. Mr. Birch. Ms. Burns McGowan. Ms. Burns McGowan. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Borgwen. Mr. Borgwen. Mr. Glover. Mr. Glover. Ms. Ms. Morrison. Ms. Morrison. Mr. Rakosevich. Mr. Rakosevich. Mr. Harden. Mr. Harden. Ms. Monteith Farrell. Ms. Monteith Farrell. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Mr. Gravel. Mr. Gravel. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Madame de Ro Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Schreiner. Madame de Rosier. Madame de Rosier. The ayes are 63, the nays are 43. The ayes are 63 and the nays are 43. I declare the motion carried. We will now vote on the main motion as amended. Mr. Yakubuski has moved government notice of motion number 20 relating to allocation of time on Bill 57, an act to enact, amend, and repeal various statutes. Is it the pleasure of the House that the motion carry? All those in favour of the motion will please say aye. Opposed will please say nay. Yay! In my opinion, the ayes have it. Same vote? No. Nope. Same vote? No. Nope. I heard a no. I heard a no. I heard a no. All those in favor of the motion? We'll call in the members. Five minute bell.
Once again, Mr. Yakubowski has moved government notice of motion number 20 relating to allocation of time on Bill 57. All those in favour of the motion as amended will please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Smith, Bay of Quincy. Mr. Smith, Bay of Quincy. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Mr. Bethlenfall. Mr. Bethlenfall. Mr. Yurick. Mr. Yurick. Ms. Mulroney. Ms. Mulroney. Ms. McLeod. Ms. McLeod. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Yakubowski. Mr. Yakubowski. Mr. Hardeman. Mr. Hardeman. Mr. Pettipes. Mr. Pettipes. Mrs. Marteau. Mrs. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Ms. Fullerton. Ms. Fullerton. Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Mr. Cho Scarborough. Mr. Cho Scarborough. Mr. Rickford. Mr. Rickford. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Miller Perry Samuskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Samuskoka. Mr. Lecher. Mr. Lecher. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Downey. Mr. Downey. Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook. Mr. Kalandra. Mr. Kalandra. Ms. Serma. Ms. Serma. Mr. Parson. Mr. Parson. Ms. Skelly. Ms. Skelly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Ms. Triantafilopoulos. Ms. Triantafilopoulos. Mr. Sakari. Mr. Sakari. Ms. Park. Ms. Park. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Ms. Kusindova. Ms. Kusindova. Mr. Romano. Mr. Romano. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Mrs. Carhall. Mrs. Carhall. Mrs. Fee. Mrs. Fee. Mr. Cho Willard. Mr. Cho Willard. Mr. Smith Peterborough Court. Mr. Smith Peterborough Court. Ms. Kanji. Ms. Kanji. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Pacini. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Tang. Mrs. Tangri. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Sandy. Mr. Sandy. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Bowen. Mr. Bowen. Ms. McKenna. Ms. McKenna. Ms. Dunlop. Ms. Dunlop. Mr. Kanapati. Mr. Kanapati. Mr. Babikian. Mr. Babikian. Mr. Babar. Mr. Babar. Mr. Anand. Mr. Anand. Mr. Pang. Mr. Pang. Mr. Tanagasa. Mr. Tanagasa. Mr. Cusetto. Mr. Cusetto. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Sabau. Mr. Sabau. All those opposed to the motion will please rise one at a time and be counted. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Bisson. Madame Jelen. Madame Jelen. Mr. Tab. Mr. Tab. Mr. Singh Brampton Center. Mr. Singh Brampton Center. Mr. Vanta. Mr. Vanta. Mr. Nadishak. Mr. Nadishak. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Beckham. Ms. Beckham. Ms. Shaw. Ms. Shaw. Mr. Mamakwa. Mr. Mamakwa. Ms. Carpoche. Ms. Carpoche. Ms. Shermanta. Ms. Shermanta. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Styles. Ms. Styles. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. West. Mr. West. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Mrs. Gretzky. Mrs. Gretzky. Ms. French. Ms. French. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Miller, Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Singh, Brampton East. Mr. Singh, Brampton Ms. East. Ms. Andrew. Ms. Andrew. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Birch. Mr. Birch. Ms. Burns McGowan. Ms. Burns McGowan. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Bourguin. Mr. Bourguin. Mr. Glover. Mr. Glover. Ms. Morrison. Ms. Morrison. Mr. Rokosovich. Mr. Rokosovich. Mr. Harden. Mr. Harden. Ms. Monty Farrell. Ms. Monty Farrell. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Mr. Gravel. Mr. Gravel. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Schreiner. Madame de Rosier. Madame de Rosier. The ayes are 63, the nays are 43. The ayes being 63, the nays being 43, I declare the motion carried. Point of order. I recognize the Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade on a point of order. Thanks, Speaker. Earlier during question period, I had indicated that Bill 57 had passed in the legislature, clearly with the vote that's just taken place. I was wrong about that. I meant to say Bill 47, here, here. Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. It is within uh, members' rights to uh, correct their own record. By way of a point of order. This house stands in recess until 1 p.m.